this video, I'm going to show you exactly how to use ChatGPT to code a mean reversion trading algorithm. So let's go ahead and do that. Build me a, or code me a mean reversion trading algorithm with CCXT, Python, and trade ETHUSD back to the mean when it deviates too much and use standard deviation to decide when to trade back to the mean. So if you've seen my previous videos, I've tried to do this before and I just wanted to give a little bit uh, more intricate uh, instructions in order to, to get it to code for me. Now, if you've never coded before, don't worry about it. Sure, I can help you write a trading algorithm with mean reversion. To clarify, you would like the algorithm that ETHUSD, the price deviates too much by a certain standard deviation. The algorithm will trade. Also, do you have specific requirements for the mean calculation? That's correct. No, please use your requirements. So it looks like they made a little update here. Here's an example of a mean reversion trading algorithm in Python that uses CCXT. Now, if this code looks like gibberish to you, don't worry about it. Uh, it's just like anything else. I, I truly believe code is the great equalizer. And if you can learn how to code, you can pretty much build anything and get any job. So let's go here and see what they're saying. So it says connect to the exchange, import statistics as stats, define the standard deviation threshold, Define the number of periods to use for the moving average. Calculate the moving average. Calculate the standard deviation for closed prices. I want to say instead, uh, grab the grab the open, high, low, close volume data and put it into a pandas data frame instead for the above code because I think it's a little easier to work with pandas, but essentially this example uses the 50 periods, last 50 periods to calculate the mean and standard deviation. You can adjust the period per your requirement. It's important to test the algorithm with historical data, historic data, and tweak the parameters. Let's see if I can update the code here because I would rather use pandas in order to do this calculation because it'll be much easier to, to work with. So let's see what it does now. Okay, perfect. So it makes the data frame with pandas. It grabs the data here, open, high, low, close. I should have told it to use Femex moving average standard deviation equals close std while true okay let's go ahead and start making some some imports um, i'm going to pretty much import this stuff but i have a, another file that will speed this up so we don't have to mess around with it too much let's say import all of this So this just connects me to the exchange. Just like that. And then we want to bring in what they coded. So we want to fetch the open, high, low, close. We want the standard deviations. We want the periods. I'd rather do 200 periods. Calculates the moving average. Calculates the standard deviation. Let's go ahead and use all this because this looks pretty good. So it gets the moving average. Let's go ahead and print the data frame to see what we have thus far. So this is all code written by ChatGPT, which is awesome. I mean, besides this part, it pretty much said do the same thing. I just had to import my keys. So you have to import your keys if you're following along. So Phoenix doesn't have ETHUSD. So let's make this symbol here like that. 
and let's put the symbol up here and it's actually ETH USD like that by the way if this is still gibberish to you uh, I do encourage you to just to keep watching just because this is this is how you learn and I'm also a self-taught programmer so you don't need to go to school for it or anything like that you can see the standard deviations here okay perfect you can see the moving average here and then we want to go ahead and get this date time into something human readable Please update the code. Let's say, please update the code and do these things. Please update the code to work for Femex, ETH USD. Let's see if it goes ahead. It says create, use limit orders, use limit orders, only enter a trade if we are not already in position. Let's give them those orders for now. And by the way, uh, in my algo trade camp, I teach you everything you need to know about algo trading. Plus I give you seven full algorithms and you get access to our discord with a bunch of algo traders. And on top of that, you get our unlimited data, which is really, really helpful. As you know, it's very hard to get data. So I'll put a link to that below. So you can see there's a rate limit, 2000 now, interesting. So it's getting the one day data. And I'm gonna say update this to get the 15 minute data and build the algo based off that. Now I got rate limited from chat GPT last night which was unfortunate I guess I was using it too much so they kicked me out I guess you can only use it so much per hour but that's okay we'll, we'll figure it out I'm actually not gonna ask it that because it gave me a lot of code here and I know I'm putting it to work so let's go ahead and see what we can do so we get the position this isn't going to work, but I do have a way to get the position. So I can do that one for sure. Let's go ahead and I think this data frame is a good place to start from because we get the standard deviation away. And what does it say here? When should we enter this rate? If distance is over standard deviation times threshold, what is threshold? So two, define the number of standard deviations for the threshold. It's two. I want to see where, how do I see only columns using pandas? Using pandas, how do I see only columns that are What does it say? Um, over two standard deviation. So I wanted to be able to spit out the columns that are over two standard deviations. And then I actually might have a file here. Let's see. I should. Okay, I have this ETH one minute data. I might go ahead and just copy this in. Well, let's do the 30 minute because it's a little less copy relative path. And this relative path, where were we? Where we go? Okay, DF, PD, create a data frame, interesting. Calculate SCV. Okay, we can do it that way, I guess. I kind of want to see what this data looks like on a long time frame and see how often it happens. So let's say df df equals p 
pd.readcsv and bring in that. And threshold is two. And let's make sure that this is all lowercase letters. Yep, open, high, low, close. And I can actually just not use this for now. I know I'm doing two things. Now I'm looking at kind of uh, almost a back test. Not a back test, but I want to see all this based off of that. So real quick timestamp. So let's print this DF, see if it calculates it correctly. Okay, perfect. Nine standard deviations, interesting. Let's look at the tail, DF.tail, and just like 78. <laughs> okay. So you can see we're deviating from the mean quite a bit. 2.9, 9.3, it's quite a bit. But how is it calculating this? Rolling periods, standard deviation close, standard deviation. Okay, that's interesting. Well, let's go ahead and use uh, one of my mean reversion algorithms that is doing well, and then see what we can do to improve it. Because I think that's probably a good place you know, working with ChatGBT just from from scratch is has proven to be a little difficult. So what I want to do here is try to bring in a file that has a pretty solid mean reversion strategy. And I think I also threw this file yet yeah, in our in the boot camp. So if you need access to it. You can grab it there, but I just want to bring this in and then make some tweaks to it in order to make sure. I pretty much want to make a second mean reversion algorithm. So I think this gives us a good idea of how to use standard deviation. I'm going to paste in a bunch of code right now. Boom, just did. And this code essentially is a standard deviation. All right, it's a mean reversion strategy that I think we can improve on. It's doing pretty well right now. I want to make sure, just give me one second, I'm going to make sure this is the right file. I'm just going to jump over here to my other computer. Yeah, looks like it is, which is good. And essentially, <clears throat> let's go through this and we can see if we can make it better. So ask bit, I'm gonna put a bunch of ideas up here too. So you can see a few days ago we did this. Changing, oh yeah. Okay, perfect. So let's make these edits here. Let's say 110. To do, I wanna look at entering based off of the ask bid function. So instead of entering based off of a price, I kind of want to look at the number of ask and number of bids. And I want to grab a price from that ladder, if that makes sense. So let's go ahead and play around with this for a bit. Let's say print ask bid time dot sleep and this should print out the ask in the bid so let's try that out but I want to make it so it is based on sorry I gotta get connected needs to pass in the symbol pretty much want to make the ask bid or the entry based off of, I don't even have symbols. Let's do all symbols. 
I'll symbol zero and that should get this first symbol which is those so instead of making the orders based off of like a random price like a calculation calculated price I want to go grab a position in the ask and bid so let's go say ask bid ask bid 10 sorry it should be ask 10 should be equal to order book bids at the ninth position and then the bid 10 will be bid 10 and this should be asks so we'll be able to see the tenth bid so what I'm talking about is on the order book You know, if the price was $1,000, the bid would be probably 999. But the 10th bid might be 991 because there's like nine in between that. So I thought that might be a good way to enter positions. And I just want to see how that looks. So let's say ask 10, bid 10. It's out of range. Okay. Well, let's see if we can bring this to like four. I might be doing this backwards. Yeah, I think I am. I have another file here that we can look at this. Um, I feel like it was called risk. Maybe it's on my other screen. Okay. So let's try one first. One, one. And I also want to print out the order book just so we get all of it. Great, so you can see, what is 3902? Oh, this is the liquidity for that. So you can see bid zero. Ah, that's why. So bid zero in the zero position is right here. And that's the bid at the closest to the price and this is the bid amount for our price and this is the amount so if we want the tenth we're gonna have to go to the tenth one two three and it's actually two so zero one two so I'm gonna go ten and then zero one stands for the liquidity and zero stands for the bid so if I want ten I'd actually put in nine here and then also let's go ahead and return the liquidity the bid lick equals OB bids and this works really well for I have I've got a, a sniper close or entry if we ever want to do market orders without the slippage super helpful so we just do one and then the same thing for ask lick. We'd say asks zero one, and this would be ask lick. Just like that. And let's say ask lick and bid lick. Just like that. And now I don't think we need to print the order book anymore since we understand how it works. Okay, perfect. So this is the price for the smallest bid, or yeah, the closest to price bid, the first up, and this is how much liquidity there is. This is the ask 
and this is how much liquidity there is. Now this is the tenth ask and the tenth bid. Ask ten, ask bid. I want to see how far can we go though. Let's see, can we do like nineteen? Might be out of range. No, it's not. Let's see how far we can push this. Let's say forty nine. Okay, that's out of range. I wonder how far is this range? I kind of want to test that out because this would be very interesting. So let's go ahead and say for X in range of zero to 100. Jeez, I keep doing that, sorry. Keep hitting the up button. Print as 10. And we'll say X is this. And I want to see when does it stop. So let's run it. Perfect. So X is out of range. So let's count these. One, two, three, or zero, one, two, three. I can't count that. This is tough to count. Let's do that. N equals X plus one. Okay, so 30 is the max. So you see what I did there? I just did a little counter. I made a little counter here. And I said N equals X plus one. So at zero, it's, it, it should be one. You can see one. So it looks like we have 30 total positions. So we can get up to 30 of the bid ass not the best not the worst but it's better than you know it's better than not being able to get that many right so let's do ask 29 ask 29 and bid 29 And let's try this out. Let's cut that, paste it here. Okay, let's say, no, I'm not talking to you, Siri. Let's say, let's delete this for now. We figured it out. Verified with a loop. Say nine here, nine here, and then ask, ask 30. I don't know if it's gonna work because, sorry, it's supposed to be 29. 29, it should work. Let's put this at. 28, I guess, because I call it 29. Let's see if it works. Okay, perfect. So this is the 29th bid and ask. This is the ask. So you can see it's much higher than this. So this is useful information that we are going to use later. So now that I have that, we can keep moving. I'm just going to figure out how to implement it. Let 
Let's go through our code and see where else we can make improvements. So the ask bid, we're gonna implement that. Open positions, nothing really need to do there. Kill position. We could use the liquidity sniper, but I don't think these positions are that huge, so I don't think we need to do that. Pinot close is fine for now. Close that for now. Get times, that's fine as well. DFSMA, this just gets our SMA. Contract calculator, this calculates how many contracts we need to do. And then here is the mean reversion algorithm. This is the actual bot. And I just want to tweak this a bit and try to use ChatGPT in order to help me out to get a even better results. Like I mentioned, it is doing pretty well and I just constantly want to improve it because that's the only way to get better, right? It's just constantly, constantly improve. And every day I will, uh, I'll uh, just make it better. So we'll go ahead and keep improving. So by the way, I know I just ran through a bunch of functions. I just can't cover them in every video, obviously, but they're in other videos or inside of the Algo Trade Camp, it's all like organized there. And you get access to all of these lessons teaching you exactly how to do everything in Algo Trading, everything I wish I pretty much had when I started. And even if you don't know how to code, you learn how to code in Python. So you get all that. Let's go ahead and say, okay, log in. Let's log back. As you read this message, please take a moment to pause and breathe. Okay. That's nice. Appreciate it. ChatGPT is at capacity right now. Wow. Okay, well, we're gonna work on it without it for now. And essentially, we're setting the leverage. We're doing cancellation times. I'm just trying to think of some more. This is the strategy. If price gets too far away from the 15 minute SMA, trade back, but only trade with the four hour trend. So the trend, if the trend is buying, then we're only trading with that trend. I like that. It seems to be doing well. So if the price is over the SMA, it's a bullish trend. So we're only gonna do mean reversions to the upside. We get the ask and the bid. It's gonna send us all that new information, which is nice. Okay, let's try this. So let's go ahead and see here. We're using this as our, let's say, we're gonna be doing buy orders because the trend is above the four hour right now. So I want to see what is this print F. This is the current price we buy at. Print F. This is the 29th bid we would buy at. So with that update we just made, uh, we might try that. And I have to see here, let's go up to it, let's see what it returns. I know what it returns, I just don't know the order. So let's jump back down to the where we were. And let's put a timed out sleep here because I don't want it to, to run too far. So we're going to put in up here this ask bid. So it would be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So bid 29 equals ask bid 7. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Perfect. 
and then it will tell us here what it is bid 29 Then I also want to look at how our clothes. What are our clothes conditions? Okay, this has to run. This is running at the same time I have other algos running, so it's gonna fail a lot. Let's go ahead and just run bot this way. Let's try that out. Oh, we don't have this directory so let's go ahead and say what line is this to CSV okay so this just needs to be something else dot CSV let's just change all of these active symbols this needs to be this copy relative path I would love to have a solution to not have to change this every time from oh was that the only one sweet okay this should work now and we won't have to wait for it, I don't think. Okay, you can see it's running right now, so it has some PL on one, loss on the other, and uh, it's up on the other. So overall, solid. Okay, so this is the 29th price we would buy at. Interesting. So maybe I'll try that out a bit. Or I could do the lower of the two. Could be a good idea. Another thing I might want to try here. Why did it just open all of these up? Another thing I might want to try is to to see to see if we want to open it up even more. So right now we're using minus 0 0.008 and that's that much lower. What is that? That's 0.8% lower than price. No, it's lower than SMA 15. Okay, I think I know what I want to do here. I want to find the lower of these two. The lower of the above. And I actually want to use a different a different uh, equation here. I want to use a, a bigger bigger spread and that spread if we're using 0 0.008 I think we can go bigger so let's say why are these mixed up with my question let's make this a little easier to read <clears throat> so these are 0 0.004 or 0.4 percent These are 0.4%, these are 0.2%. Let's make this a little easier. I haven't used these ones yet though. So that's 0.2%. And these I'm not using them yet. This is 0.2%. 0.2% away from the SMA. I'll say 0.2%. 0.4 and 
percent and now I want to try a 1.6 percent no sorry is that what I want to do yes I want to double this 1.6 1.6% so how do we do that we just go like this and we say 1.6% So plus 16, and this would be 16 minus 16. So how do we do that? It would be 84. So that would be to equal 100, 1,000, you add 0 0.016. So that's plus 16, and, or minus 16, and this is plus 16. And then what I want to say is 110 testing 1.6% away from SMA versus twenty ninth bid. So now I want to say which which is bigger, ask or bid. So let's go get the ask as well for the 29th. Let's see if ChatGPT is awake yet. It's really been playing with me the last couple of days. Get notified when we're back. I guess everybody wakes up around this time. It just goes crazy on ChatGPT. I wonder how they're going to scale this. I'm working on something that is gonna allow me to pretty much build, rebuild my own ChatGPT, but no limits, and it pumps out the actual code, which will be super nice. I'll let you guys know when that is available, of course. I'll probably give it out to all the bootcamp members that are in the Discord, first and foremost, of course. So you get private Discord access, and that's where I spend my time. So I'll make sure all the tools work for, for those people first. But I do appreciate you just, even if you're just watching, and you don't have to join the bootcamp. You know, I, I make sure to put a lot of good information out here as well. Let's go ahead and get that ask now. So bid 29, we want ask 29. Ask 29, ask bid, it would be six. So let's go ahead and just borrow these, bring them down here. And let's say bid open, bid price equals, and ask price equals. I don't know why I'm writing that, but bid 29. So we have the ask and we have the bid 29. And let's say if Sorry, I got to think sometimes. So I pause. If So this, we want the higher one. If this, if that is bigger, then we would be using this for the plus. Let me just double check that. Yes, it'd be plus to sell. So we're looking for the ask price. If it's bigger than the ask, 29, then ask price equals, that's why I wrote this, ask price equals this. Else, ask 
ask price equals equals ask 29. So if this is bigger because we want the bigger one of the two, then the ask price equals that. If not, ask price equals this. And then we're going to do the same thing, but for bid. So I'm just going to write it. Uh, if on if we are buying or selling. And then also I need to change, change out symbols to try new ones or not try new ones, but since this is a different to trade new ones because this is a different test. So right now I'm using these symbols for that first test and I need to change them to different symbols because we want a different test. And I'm going to make a little fail safe here. Let's say try. Try this because maybe the order book won't always come back with all the data we need. Then we'll say ask bid equals zero. Should it be zero or none? If it's zero, let's do just, let's, if it doesn't come back with anything, I'm gonna just return the 10th one. Oops, that wasn't right. Because I know it'll have at least 10 and I just don't want my algo to stop for some reason. So we'll do that. So trying to get the 29th bid or 30th or 29th. If it fails, set to 10. There we go. I like that. Okay, so let's just head back down here to see where we're, what we're implementing here. We've got the 15 minute, the five minute, the four hour. I think those are solid for now. We're just gonna keep it how it is. I see why I hit rate, rate limits, but it's okay. So if ask bid, now we wanna say if, so this is tricky. If this, we want the smaller one of this, right? Because we're, if is smaller than bid, bid 29. So if it's smaller, then the bid price equals this one. Cause we want the one further away. Cause we're buying, we want a cheaper price else ask or bid price equals bid 29 because that would mean bid 29 so if this would mean that the SMA minus 16 or 1.6 percent is smaller than the bid 29 and we want the smaller one so in that case we want that one else the bid price equals bid 29 Perfect. Now let's go ahead and delete all of this. Well, I probably should have kept that. Oh, I guess I don't need it. Print bid price. Print bid price. And ask price. And then also print SMA 15 plus 16, should have done it the other way. SMA 
minus 16. So that's going to give us the SMA minus 16. I just want to double check, make sure this all works. And then print bid 29 and ask 29. And then let's do a time.sleep. Go ahead and run it. So the bot is still running. Looks like it took some profits on Solana, down on Doge. Okay, so this is, what do we say? Minus 16 would be this, and plus 16 would be this. Bid 29 is clearly lower than that so it would go with that and this is clearly bigger than that so we go with that perfect so this logic works great now we just want to pop in the bid price i want to pop in the bid price here because we want to be buying bid price and then we want to pop in the ask price here ask price perfect now we're good to go i think this is a solid little test to run i want to go ahead and write some notes here so updated the bid and ask pricing model so it looks at the lower looks at 1.6 percent away from the SMA 15, but also looks at the 29th bid ask and grabs the higher or lower of each and uses that as the bid ask, the entry. Let's say see more on what line did I write this on? Um, 494. No, not 494. Print 110. New additions. 522. So on line 522. Okay. So we did that, use the lower or the higher of the two. We wanna to try to use some new symbols. I'm gonna go ahead and see over here on Femax. See if I have my Femax open. So what symbols are we using now? Try XRP. Let's go ahead and I'm just going to copy this so I can have both. I'm just looking at all symbols on Femex right now, my other screen. It's XRP USD, and I'm just looking for high volume ones. So link USD, and then I already have Doge up here. I've already got Mana. How about ADA USD? ADA USD. And then I'll just do those three for now. So I'm gonna change these symbols and I'm gonna let this run. Also changed to three symbols so I can let it run. And test first. Because I wanna be able to test it versus the other ones. And this will be a good way to do that. So I think that's pretty good. Uh, let's see, done. And then I think I'm gonna make another version of this with some different close conditions. So if you wanna see that, make sure to stick around. Um, I'll make sure that all the code for the meme version algorithm is here inside of the bootcamp where I teach you pretty much 
everything. Well, absolutely everything I wish I knew when I first got started. And step by step, you get access to our Discord. You get some huge bonuses. You get seven algorithms, which is pretty dope. I just go through all of them so you understand all of them. And the goal is so that you can forever build any strategy that you have, backtest it, and then put it into production. And then you also get the market maker, the meme reversion algo, and a data source for unlimited data, which is awesome. Very hard to get one minute data, five minute data, and so on. So you get access to all of that inside of the bootcamp. And I will see you there or in the next video.